Hiya guys and welcome back to Wade's Workshop. So part 9 of the Webster engine. Um, in this episode we're going to be continuing to do a little bit more work on the crankshaft and I'm also going to start making, uh, while I'm waiting for bits and pieces to come in and what have you, I'm going to start making or blocking up the bits and pieces that make up the valve chest, the little uh, three layers. Uh, those of you who have seen the drawings you can see where I'm going with that. Um, so, oh, just a bit of uh, background. I've ordered uh, a few more bits and bobs for the mini lathe project. Um, I haven't forgotten about it, it's been on the back burner for a little while, but I've ordered a few bits and bobs for it. So um, I'll be picking that up in a later episode. So I think I will do an episode of Shed Talk this week. Um, try and get the footage for an episode of Shed Talk. And I'll show you a few of the new bits and bobs that have come in. Um, for those of you that still want key rings, uh, they keep running out. I'm only listing them 10 at a time on eBay at the moment. Uh, I'll put a new link to the latest ones on this video as well. So if any of you missed out, um, I put 10 up at a time and within a day or so those 10 have gone. So I'll keep putting them up as and when uh, until the uh, demand runs out as it were. Um, but thanks to all of you that have bought one, it's been a great uh, source of revenue for AIDS Workshop and allowing me to carry on with these projects as far as the finances are concerned. Anyway, so thanks very much guys and of course for every one of you that buys one, another pound goes into the kitty for um, Alzheimer's so that's great. I think in work um, where I've been putting, I've been basically uh, highlighted them in work as well and I've been selling them there every time I sell one in work I've uh, been putting two pound in so uh, I think we're, we're well over 80 pounds in the kitty so far so it'd be really nice to be able to get up to that 100 pound mark to kick the charity off with a good start for next year and I will be doing other stuff for it as well uh, you know outside of YouTube to try and raise um, some good money over this over 2023 for the for the charity okay that said Let's get on with it. Oh, motorbike going by. <laughs> Let him go. Right. So, um, original length overall was three and a half. I've left myself an extra inch um, on the end um, because I may want to put some sort of drive cup to be able to connect it up to fire the engine up or maybe even some sort of pulley on it at some stage in the future. Um, but So I've left an extra inch, so there's going to be an inch sticking out the back. For now, we can always remove it later. So with that said, um, the shaft is in there now at four and a half inch long. It's grub screwed in from the other side and just nipped, so that shaft isn't going to move. So my thought is to put a long grub screw down through here, through this side. I'm going to drill it with a, well, it's going to be M4. I'm going to get some 20 mil grub screws, some nice 12.9s, what have you. I'm going to turn the thread down over the end portion to make a pin and that way I can remove the pin that goes through the two. So basically the shaft is going to be pinned to this. Um, so yeah, I'll turn the grub screw down, shoulder it, so that when I unscrew the grub screw, the pin is all at one with it that comes through the shaft a lot. So 3.2. Uh, let's have a little bit of liquid love on here. And I'm going to get 20 mil grub screws. I haven't set a zero, so um, I'm going to go 22 mil from there, am I? 23. 23 mil from there, so 22 mil deep from the point of the drill. I've centered it all up. Um, I'm 125 ma uh, thou from that back face. M4 grub screw, I didn't say. Did I? I either did or didn't, but I have again. <laughs> so we should be hitting the shaft soon. Basically a retractable bell pin. And then through the top portion, I'll put a 3.3 in and that will allow me to tap the top portion. I'll do that when I've taken the shaft out again.
so right through the shaft and into the metal the other side. Um, it should avoid that grub screw. The other grub screw, which is on an angle to this one. But what did I say? 23 mil. Oh. I think I've broken through there. Just taking it very gently here. 23 I'm going for. That's it. Okay. So I'm going to take that shaft out of there now and drill and tap the top bit. Um, and I now I think what I'll do is just swap the drill at this point I'll take it out when I come to tap it and I'll tap it by hand okay so distance that's 9 mil from the shaft so when I make the grub screw I have to have 9 mil of thread um, if I go down in 10 mil from a touch on there, but let's just eyeball it. There, is that zero? Okay, the 3.3 mil fitted in the 3.2 hole, it didn't hardly took a thing. Right, so, um, let me put those drills away before I mix them up. That's a 3.3, that's a 3.2. Uh, take it out the vise, or start the tap. I think what I'll do is get the first few threads in there first with the, uh, while well, I've got it all lined up just to make sure my tap is square. Um, Taps, taps, taps. Here we go. So I'm just wandering out shot aimlessly here. <laughs> Four mil tap. Uh, how much travel have I got? I got enough to certainly get that tap started anyway. I think a lot of time invested in this part now. So, no power tap in today. In fact, I will be taking the tap out, uh, the rod out, and tapping it right through to that ball, but. Uh, 9 mil I said, didn't I? I just set a zero there. I know that tap is going to be going 9 mil. Or 10 I can go. So as the tap is pulling my quill down, I can read the DRO on the quill and see how deep we're tapping. That's 9 mil. The rule is a mil. So if I go to 10 mil, which is there, it'll just need a little finish off when I take the shaft out. Now I'm going to have to orientate the shaft correctly. Because if I'm slightly off and I put that shaft in the wrong way round to line it back up, we're going to uh, have issues. So I think I'll probably put a couple of little centre dots on the end just to 
<laughs> as a reference. Yes, I will. Um, okay, so yeah, a yabbering away to myself. Just thinking if I take that rod out and I put it in 180 degrees out when I put it back in, if that hole is, you know, a hair out of position, we're going to have misalignment. So back in in that orientation. So I have put a tiny centre pop there. Probably won't pick up on camera. And a tiny centre pop there just to give me that orientation when I put it back together. So, um, <laughs> that's the one we just drilled. Take the original grub screw out, back him off a bit. Okay. Okay. So that goes right through, out the other side. Happy days. Yeah, that's good. Just missed that grub screw there. In fact, it's right on the edge of it. Not to worry. Um. So, probably just run a stone over that. Where's a little oil stone? Here we go. Both sides. Okay. So, uh, all that remains now is for me to tap that hole into the into the bottom. I can use a little vice here for that. Get him somewhere near level. I have to get my little tap wrench. I don't know, can you see that? I'm even out of shot. There we are, you can see me now. So I just need to make sure, obviously that's a taper tap. I just want to tap through into that bore. Uh, tap wrench. I think that one's small enough. Yeah. So, it's only going to be a couple of turns, it will, but. Uh, Hold the vice. So if my grub screws turn back, 20 mil grub screw, 20 mil M5, M4. If the grub screws turn back 11 mil, the grub screw should bottom out, level with this top face, and go right through. Okay. I think we'll call that good. So, doweled it on, basically. So I've just turned grub screw down. 3.3 uh, here from a 4mm grub screw. Now, that was a good fit in the hole in the shaft. I mean, it was a snug fit. So I've just lined that up, put my two little dots in line on the end. And that grub screw taps into the to the web and it's just pushing and pinning that shaft down in okay so that um, is now dry fit into there and that should hold it but if I do need to I can obviously remove the pin along with the grub screw oh not that one <laughs> it's the other grub screw that pulls the pin out it's a good fit in there Ooh. so as you can see that pin goes right down through the shaft when it's right in. So, um, I will be Loctite in the pin in afterwards. Or on a final assembly. Uh, 
I think on the drawing it shows silver solder on here. Uh, I haven't got the facilities for silver solder. So I'm just going to put, I will put that grub screw in the other side as well. Not that it's doing anything now. Here we are. So that's the the way I'm fastening fastening it onto the end of there. I've just made up the little spacer ring. It had to be 101 thou. Um, so it's half inch diameter, which is the same diameter as the little boss here. And I've turned the, a little rebate on it on the front, so that when it goes into the hole in the plate. It's going to pick up on the inner race, which is 10 mil OD. So there's a little 10 mil shoulder on it, only like a mil deep. So it's a good fit, as you can see. Um, so that spacer is going to go down into there. In fact, there's no reason I should be able to get it off again. Okay. So there's a little spacer ring. Can you see it? Is it in shot? Yes, it is. Whether my focus is any good or not, I don't know. Um, so that's the spacer. So let me bring you out. Uh, where are we? Okay. So let's try and explain myself. So the little bearings are going to go in here. Okay, that's in. Well, that was lucky. And when it sits against that spacer I made the front of this space will be a quarter inch away from that face which is the way it was already uh, originally designed so I did do the maths I know I had extra thickness on here so that is going to go through there and be correct so if I just pop that bearing on there so that's how it's going to sit now what's useful about that is that I can now, without having it all in the frame, put the flywheel on and look at pinning the flywheel in that position. Um, obviously, I'll leave maybe a, a thou gap. But, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much where we are with that. Um, I don't want the flywheel tight against there. In fact, I may put a couple of thou spacer again, a little spacer ring against that inner race. That might be a good idea. Um, so that the end of the flywheel isn't touching on the outer race of, the, of this bearing when it's rotating. Maybe a thought. Uh, I'll have to think about that. So my issue is that the diameter on the end of the flywheel here, if it's tight against the bearing, is going to be touching on the inner race and the outer race, as you can see. Um, which is not good. We only want it to be bearing on the inner race. So if I just... Uh, Let's just do it metric. Always more comfortable with metric. 12 mil. So if there was a little step on the end of here, um, it only got to be half a mil uh, deep, but at 12 mil diameter, then the end face here will be bearing against the inner race, but clearance on the outer race, which is what we want. So I think that's the simplest way I can do it. It's going to end up that way round. Um, when it's against, I don't want to have it tight, tight. I have allowed a thou clearance or a couple of thou clearance in the width of the flywheel and the um, the timing gear pulley to go in this gap. So I think we're going to have the flywheel right back against there. I'm just going to relieve one side of the flywheel slightly, just down to a diameter of 12 mil, maybe half a mil back, just to give that clearance on the outer race. So, as you can see, little step, half a mil back, down to 12 mil diameter. So if I just place the bearing on there, ooh, roughly centrally. Hold the, ooh, <laughs> hold the centre. And yet the outer race is, is clear. It's not rubbing on anything. Uh, the shield is always a tiny bit down, so we're not touching the shield either. So, that's better. That's designed better now. Uh, we're not going to get any rubbing, and I'm not worried if there's no gap. So I'm waiting on some roll pins to come in, so I can't really continue with the crank. So I'm just using the time, um, while I'm waiting on bits and pieces, uh, to block up the valve assembly. So um, it consists of a, a triple layer sandwich of parts, which are screwed together later. 
and those parts are 5 8 0.625 by an inch by a quarter inch thick. Now I haven't got any quarter stock aluminium but I found this off cut a 3 8 um, in fact it might even be 5 16 so I think it's 3 8 um, or it, is it 10 mil? I don't know. Um, 8 mil actually so 5 16 so it's not a great deal to come off it. So um, I'm just going to block it up an inch uh, wide so I'm just flashing off the top this was a hacksaw cut on here I'll deburr it, flip it over upside down, machine the other side to get a finished size of an inch and we'll chop them up into three pieces afterwards uh, but while it's in this state it, as one piece I'm going to flash it off to a quarter inch um, take this past one side, turn it over and then finish it off to a quarter so just using the fly cutter for this um, yeah I'll bring you back when I'm all done um, it's a blocking up exercise. You've seen it a thousand times. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, sawed the piece into three um, and machined them up so that they will drop one in the hole. <laughs> They're all one inch by 625 by 250 thick. They actually come out about 249 and a half thick, so uh, I'm not worried about that. Uh, the 625 is 626, and the one inch is about half out up. So, yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. I mean, I could polish them up or what have you, but, uh, yeah, I've just run them over a piece of wet and dry just to tidy them up, take the sharp edges off, give them a deburr around all edges, just a light deburr. So they're ready to accept all the holes, and this is going to be the little valve block. So just to try and elaborate, they're going to stack up like that. There's going to be four bolts, tapped holes in the bottom one, clearance holes in the middle one, clearance holes in the top perhaps with a chamfer or what have you and a bolt in each corner um, oh, I forget whether it's top or bottom I think it's the bottom one top or bottom one anyway there's gonna be a hole in this end in for the exhaust port and then one of the other blocks is a hole this end for the inlet port and then there are the valves there's some inserts in which I'm gonna make a mother bronze one in the top one one in the bottom one to take the two valves uh, one one end one the other and then in the centre there is the pocket and cavity that goes into the engine block. So imagine a little hole drilled in here. Either side of it in the central block is a clearance hole um, so that two screws can come through this way and bolt it onto the cylinder head. Um, but the, the holes in the cylinder head are already there. But yeah, for, uh, a lot of holes to go in here now. That's pretty much the story of it. So I've just drilled the four corners of this first one. So I sat it on parallels. I picked up the center of the world by uh, zeroing on this space, stepping out the, uh, the right amount on the wobbler, picked up this space, zeroed out the correct amount on the wobbler, and I put the four holes in the four corners. These are the sandwiching holes that hold the three plates together. So with that done, um, somewhere around here, here it is. <laughs> I've got the key, and I'm going to pull that one out. So, what I'm going to do is just mark where's my pen. I've just been using it, it can't, oh, you know, think, oh, it's in my pocket. So, I'm going to go a little X mark there. And that tells me that that was the back corner on the right. Okay, I can put that one down. So, uh, there's going to be three plates. The bottom one, and I just launch my parallels over the back. They need cleaning again now. Okay, just wipe those off. That's that one. That's that one. So top plate, exactly the same. So I'm just going to pop that against the stop. Let me just make sure I'm down. Oh, come on. Okay. Nip the vise. I can just slide the two parallels out. Just make sure that's tight. Okay, so I'm going to do these holes again. So, uh, 438, and I've just rubbed off what was written on here. 
So this is going to be the either middle or top plate. Doesn't make any difference at this stage. Got a little bit of WD-40 on the brush. So drawing calls for a imperial thread. I'm going M3, which won't be a problem. So um, my DRO is set on 438. I'm just going to go back to zero. That will be these two holes. There we go. Drill is holding center lovely here. First one I did use a spotting drill on the first two holes. Uh, forgot to swap it on the next two, but it, it, it just, it's holding center lovely. So, don't need to use a spotting drill. Okay, uh, so, I have to go back to my drawing. Two seconds. Uh, not 813. So I'm on zero in X. Go eight, whoop, bump the camera, 813. Give it a bump. Got the. We need a bit more WD on there. And then 438 again in the fourth direction. So for the last plate, hold on, 438. I'm talking and trying to do work at the same time, that's fine. Last plate, going to change the drill bit. It's going to be M3 tapping drill. 3.3. So, uh, on M3 you can get away in aluminium, especially this thing, 3.2. But I will do it 3.3. So I'm just going to take that drill bit out so that I don't mess it up. Put it away. That was a three mil drill. Um, you know what, M3, it's not 3.3, is it? Bear with me, where's my Zeus book? I think it's 2.5. Oh, dear me. Adrian, 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 2.5. You know what, I nearly messed that up. So I swapped a 2.5 drill. How can an M3 tapping drill be 3.3 mil? What's wrong with you? It's been one of those days. Oh, hang on. I know what I haven't done. Got the pen out again. Made a mark on that corner. So I got two of those now. They should be equal about. And then the third one, which is going to be the bottom one. Let's just clean that. So it was nice to check visually as well as just using the brush. Okay, so number three. Hold down, push against the stop. Okay, we're on the smaller drill now. So these are going to be tapped. What we'll we on? Four, three, seven, eight, one, three. Oh. Make sure you take the parallels out, eight. So I haven't bumped it down. Uh, you know, over this sort of lens, it's not going to cause a problem if, uh, if it's not hard down. I pushed it down onto them. So these are going to be tapped. So back to zero. So these have been all set off the same datum, basically. So I'm hoping when I put the bolts in, they'll all line up. 
tap and drill for M3 here and we'll go round with the M3 tap at the end of this so back to zero let me unlock my Y Ooh, miles past there we go I'm hoping that all the outside edges line up nicely but we've used the same datum, same setup. I could have spotted them all through, but uh, oh, I forgot the size again. Oh, I did write it down on my vice, but I, I rubbed it off. Back to my phone. Two seconds, 813. normally write these things down but uh, I've been relying on the image on my phone so even though there's no parallels underneath um, nice sharp drills I'm not putting any pressure down here so there's no danger of it sliding down in the vice okay so I'm gonna swap this drill bit out for a tap now and tap uh, three mil. I'll do it by hand by turning the chuck. I'm going to tap uh, the three mil holes in these four here, and this is going to be the bottom one. Let me just, while I'm at it, make the mark, and I won't forget it later on. So power tap in these, being brave today. 8 1, ah, forgotten again. Was it 8 1 3? Somebody shout it out. 8 1 3, yeah. <laughs> Eight one three four three eight. That's it. That's going backwards. I saw one of short. Sure, one of you shouted that out as well. Keeping the WD flowing. Finger on the stop button. Reverse. Push start. Let it wind back out. There we are. So, um, I'm going to have to deburr all of these holes, shampoo them, probably run the tap back through by hand. So that's the, uh, in fact, I've lost my mark again. Piece of cloth, piece of cloth. There it is. Pen, I know where it is now, it's in my pocket. Okay, I might put a little dot next to these corners so that I've got a reference even when I rub it off like I just have been doing. So yeah, I think I will do that. I'll put a little dot next to that corner on the top face so that I've got a reference even when I, because uh, that will, yeah, as you can see, it will rub off. So I'll put a little dot That'll give me a fighting chance moving forward to make sure everything's orientated in the way in which it was drilled. So I do have the correct drill bit, but not a hope. Okay, um, yeah, I'll have to change to a collet and uh, drill it out with the right drill bit. So, hey-ho, I just put the 932 drill bit up and it's, uh, it's bent. Um, that's going to put a way oversized hole, so uh, think again, eight, whoop, bump the tripod. So I do have a 7.1 932 is about 7.15, but I'm going to go with this. I did put a 6.5 through first. Okay. I'm gonna call that, I'm gonna call that good. So, 
that's the hole in the center so now there's a hole in the back of this which is the hole from the center of this into the exhaust into the inlet port of the head do I do that next or do I put the holes in the other parts while I've got the datum set that are in this orientation I, I think that's what I'm going to do so I will deburr this afterwards I've got the orientation I'm going to right middle on this again now while I've got it so middle middle block okay uh, let's have a weird and wonderful drill out of it so, well, weird and wonderful it's a 7.1 mil metric drill so uh, I can go back in its holder so we haven't got to go searching for it and you know what I've just realized I just drilled that with a 7 mil drill I just put it back in its holder this is the 7.1 <laughs> okay, well, you know, sometimes you win. I wasn't looking close enough. So this is a 7.1 drill. That hole would have been not like a couple of thou under size. It would be more like four or five thou under size. Come on, Spanner. Go on the net. Thank you. Right. Let's try that again, shall we? Should just do a scratch. Let's speed this bugger up. Okay, yeah, I wouldn't have known that I'd put the wrong size drill in, or an undersized drill in, I don't suppose it would have mattered greatly, but uh, I wouldn't have known, had I not put that drill back in the holder, and realised I'd picked the wrong one out of the tool set, or out of the drill set, so, okay, let's try that again, I'm going to lose my M, And in the pocket middle middle block okay so I'll go back to my drawings and see what makes sense as to do next whether I keep my datums here or uh, do something else so this is the top plate and it does have a 516th reamed hole down through here and then it's Counterboard on the underside, 375,000. So I'll have to reset a datum for that and just pick up. But I do want these holes in line. I'll have to clock in the hole from the underside afterwards, I think. Probably the safest way to get these in line. So send a drilled hole there. Now I have got a 516th reamer. 313, 3125, it's, it's just normal. So let's put a uh, 6.5 again. Oh, let's just lift that up. 6.5. Probably then change to a 7mm drill. That'll do. 6.5 there. Oh, a bit more group, I think. A bit more WD-40. Uh, 6.5. Let me just check that's under size. I have the Zeus book right in my pocket. That is under size, surely, from 516. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. Yes. So, I'll just pop that in. So, I'll have a quick look in my Zeus book again, see what's uh, sort of, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 under, 5 sixteenths in metric, because I've got 0.1s in metric, 5 sixteenths is, I'm not very good on this, uh, it's around about the 8mm mark, so 
maybe a 7.7 .7 drill. I know that's going to be the same collet as I use for the 516 Rima. I'm just going to take a chuck out with its collet. Um, okay. So 7 to 8 mil collet I've got here. Forget what size I said. Uh, I tell you what, it's been one of those. That's it. Um, so put that collar in. 7.7, 7, that's what I said. Ooh, let's get the drill out. 7.7 7 mil drill. So I've got a 7.7 7 here. Oh, I have to bring the head down. Just tighten that collar up. Get ourselves somewhere near. Is that coming into sight? Yes. That should do me. Bit of WD on it again. And then uh, swap to the 516th Rima now. I think you. We're all in shot here, apart from my arm, locking everything up. Then 516 Serema. Lock that in the collet. This is a new nut on here. One of those ball bearing ones. Slow that down, what we're going to do, about 400. Yeah, I got my pipe to get down and drill that. Let's have a bit of WD on it. Five sixteenths, reamed hole in there. So, um... May have to put a little shamper on there. Do that with a noga, and then pick up on the other side at a later date, and put a uh, maybe need to get a flat bottom drill, maybe 10 mil flat bottom, something like that to put the rebate in 31 five thick. That's what's going to keep the um, the valve guide in. Uh, basically, the head on the valve guide is going to be on the underside of here. Um, this being the top block um, so it will squeeze down on top of the middle block which is a smaller hole but that rebate will keep the valve guide up in position so yeah I know what I'm doing <laughs> um, have a look at the drawings I did put the drawings up uh, in the description of episode 7 so you'll see the bits that I'm making there uh, but just having fun at the moment so I keep losing my witness marks. Bottom one's obvious. It's got a dot on it in the right corner. But it's got tapped holes. So, middle one, which is number two in the stack. I put two dots in that corner on the top one. Even though I've written T on it. has got the one dot. So, yeah, just trying to make sense of it. The holes are different sizes. So, this top one in the underside... I'm going to have to pick this back up in the vise, clock up the hole, and then do the little rebate. So that rebate is going to sit on top of there, and the valve guide is going to push into that rebate and stick up from the top. Then on the bottom one, the hole is going to be the same size in the same location, but the rebate is going to be on this top face for the valve guide to stick out the bottom. So... Uh, yeah, uh, that'll be the next one to do. I sh perhaps I should have done the bottom one first and done that rebate. Then I would have had the tooling ready. I would have just had to clock up the top one and uh, use the same tools. But anyway, that's enough of a day for today. Um, I've had a, had a long day. I'm on a Sunday here. I just put a video up, part eight, and I'm filming part nine as we speak. So uh, yeah, just having fun with all of this, actually.
So, uh, I think we'll draw this one to a close. It's quite a long episode again. Plenty going on with it. As you can see, I'm moving forward. Um, with that said, I think I'll try and do an episode of Shed Talk this week. And, you know, just do a bit of an update or what have you as to what's come in. So, can I just say at this point, thanks to all of you that have bought a keyring. Um, you know, all, all these funds have been going towards um, these odd bits of equipment. I, As I mentioned earlier, I bought some bits to carry on with the Mini Lathe project as well. Um, so yeah, thank you all for your support. I think we're we're going to be very shortly up to a hundred pound in the uh, in the kitty in work for uh, Alzheimer's. So that's going to be marvellous. Okay. Um, oh, the moustache that that's got a few days left before that comes off. Uh, Movember moustache November. Um, that's for prostate cancer. So that's a that's another little thing that's outside of YouTube. But uh, that's why this uh, horrible grey hairy lip. That I'm wearing. <laughs> okay. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Hit that thumbs up button if you like this video, and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.